song I'm singing today I'm redeemed I'm redeemed And sorrow has vanished away I have been, I have been
we serve a worthy lamb, amen. A lamb that can heal, a lamb that, lamb that can save, and amen, and do so many things for us. We've seen him move in marvelous ways. I want to thank the Lord for, amen, being with our brother Aaron as he went through heart cath, and amen, we got a really good report on that, excellent report, we thank the Lord for that. Amen. I also want to thank the Lord for bringing Brother Ron through as well. It's kind of interesting. They both were going through it at the same time. And amen, Brother Ron's still a little weak and had several blockages they had to take care of. But amen, by God's grace, amen, they was able to take care of every one of them. And so we're thankful for that. I want to remember, uh, of course, our Brother Joe Adams that's away ministering in California. Ask the Lord to be with him today and his trip back home. Also, we have Brother Boyce Mitchell. Uh, he's taken to the ER last night. He's been having issues with his foot. It was extremely inflamed and red, and the doctors believe has an infection there in the bone. So they've admitted him, and he's under pretty high antibiotics and high doses of that. Been dealing with this since last August. So I just want to remember him today that God would just touch him in his body. And, and I believe we have a lamb for that. Amen. And so we also, uh, Brother E.J. Parker was in the ER as well with the kidney stone. understand he's doing a little bit better, but just uh, remember him today. Brother Alvin Adams is also was up all night last night, not doing well today. Sister Jenny, uh, Jenny Lay was in the hospital um, having a, she had a surgery uh, to prepare for dialysis and a lot of pain, so... I want to pray for a swift recovery for her. Also, um, Dillard Sykes, he's a pest con owns a pest control company here in Minden. Uh, he actually sprays our building, does things around here, but his wife passed away last night from cancer. So I want to remember them today. Amen. How many would have a need? Just want to make it known to the Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask our brother Leo if he'd come and just open our service in prayer and Amen. Pray for these needs. And amen. Appreciate him and his wife being here from China. I don't know exactly when they're headed back, but we just ask the Lord to be with them and their work there that they're doing for him there in China, that God will just bless them. Amen. Hello, good morning, every brother, sisters. Uh, first, thank you, Brother Tim C and Brother Tim Pru, hospitality, and also Brother John Lee and his family. I'm so happy to be here. I just want to share a little interest, interesting things because my English is not so good. I uh, hope you can understand because God can, Holy Spirit can anoint the donkey speak Chinese, can speak language, men's language. So I, I'm sure that because can Holy, uh, Holy Spirit can anoint me to speak English very well. You know, in, uh, in Chinese Mendon, the name of this, your city, do you know what it means? It means uh, bright light and a lighthouse, evening light. So it's a tremendous blessing for your church, I know. So this is why the reason today I'm coming here. So you, you know, it's really interesting that. Uh, so I think that I said this is not from men, it's from God. Predestinated the name Mendon has the evening light, have you so water, Oh, I say, what the church, what the ministers, what the congregations is all blessing from God. Amen. You know, um, I think five years ago, uh, eight years ago, coming here, oh, I think, oh, tremendous. I do a little labor on the uh, construction for the building, but now I think all oh, that is God used Brother Tim Pro specially, you know. He not only built the church, but he built the bride church, you know. Yes. All the bride grooms, oh, I feel so blessed by his ministries. So let's bow down for all the uh, needs. I don't know what the special need, but I cannot a little read by little, but I gotta know every detail, everything, everyone you need, even yourself, you know, everyone know. So I'm sure God will hear our pray. Also, I know that if we just like a prayer lies, we have no pray card, but I know everybody has the pray card. Where? In your heart. So I believe you, what you need today, God will receive, God will fulfill. Any people, any people, okay, let the power has. Oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, we so thank you. 
This is a very secret moment. We know this is what a blessed, what a blessed church, what a blessed day, what a blessed ministers, what a blessed congregation. Now, Lord, I know that I have passed, uh, I have attended the so supernatural uh, youth camp. I was feel so blessed by brother, all these ministers. I feel so, so inspired by these ministers. So, Lord, continue to use Brother Tim Brew and his church and all the ministers. I know this is not from man, it's from our God. All the revelation is from God. Our oh, oh, is what is so, so amazing grace, Lord. I just continue to use this church. Also, I, Lord, you know, just Brother Tim just read all this need. Sorry, I cannot read it little by little, but then God, you know every details. You know every brother, sister, whether they're in the, uh, in the disease, whether in the trouble, even in the congregation, whatever you need. Maybe you need it for your financial, maybe you need it for your family, maybe you need it for your kids. Lord, you every detail what you need. So we have no prayer card in our hands, but we know that God knows our need because you hold tomorrow. Lord, just you know the mentioned name is the light house, is the bright light. You know everything. That you, I think it's before the foundation, you predestinated this church, predestinated these ministries, predestinated even light as a bright, as a light among the bright. Lord, you just continue to use Brother Tim, Brother Tim, Tim Pro and Brother Tim and his church, the church to bless all the congregations, bless all the all these bright all over, all over the world. Including China, I hope we, I hope we can uh, pray each other. Help to build all the bride. You know, without China, you cannot perfect perfect. Also, without uh, U.S. the uh, U.S.A. the uh, bride, we cannot perfect. Thank you, God. Hear our pray, Lord. Just thank you, God. Okay, bless brother Tim, uh, brother Tim Bruce preaching. Use him continue in a tremendous way. Thank you, Lord. Hear our humble pray. Let all we have diseases get healed. All this, just Brother Tim's read, every brother, sister in diseases get healed. Uh, you continue to use Brother Ron Spencer. He's a real fighter. I hope, I, I believe, I do believe. He has already taken it back, taken it back. His original faith, taken it back. His original faith, healthy. He's taken it back. Original God first created his perfect body. Lord, just remember Brother John Spencer. Continue to use Brother John Spencer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Pray in the name of Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Won't you just turn around, shake one of his hand. Welcome each other to the house of the Lord. Also, want to welcome Brother Matt McFadden's parents, Brother John, Sister Maureen. God bless you. Glad you're with us. Amen. I mean, he's happy to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 If you have any, any other guests here, make them welcome if they're sitting beside you. Amen. God bless you. I've been to the water and I've been baptized. Amen. Ask the brothers they would to take up the offering. Amen. And tithes and offering just give us unto the Lord. Well, I've been to the water and I've been baptized. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I've been changed from the creature that I once was. Yeah. 
seated. We're going to sing that last verse. Brother Tim going to sing us something this morning. Amen. Amen. Everybody's saying they ain't got voice. Well, I don't either. Amen. So we just have no voice together this morning. I have found the joy no tongue can tell how it sways a glory roll. It is like a singing, I said, joy unspeakable and full of glory. He had different. Well, there is power, so much power. Oh, there's power in the name, in the name of Jesus. There's power, so much power. Oh, there's power. But as the word comes forth this morning, your body must obey. So get up on your feet right now to God give your praise. For there's power, so much power. Oh, there's power in the name, in the name of Jesus. There's power, so much power. Oh, there's power. Victory is 
blessing it is to serve the Lord and to be his children today. God knows every need that you have, every situation. He knew it before it ever happened. And he already had a way of escape, a plan. He's got a plan for your life today. Amen. I know that he's got a message for you that he'll touch your heart and reveal himself to you. Amen. We want to welcome you today in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. It's good to see the weeb still here. Also, Brother John, Sister Maureen McFadden, God bless you. Um, Matthew's parents, they're here. They're here to see the eclipse. But I pray they'll see the phenomena of God in our meeting today. Amen. It's even greater than an eclipse. Amen. He's a pastor there in Pennsylvania, so they do a mighty work there, and we thank the Lord for every work of God, every lighthouse. Amen. I, I, I was thinking about Brother Leo a moment ago, him and Sister Rebecca. They have, we spent some time with them this week, and they fixed us some Chinese food. It was so good, and had lots of fellowship together talking about the things of God and the message that God has given us in this day and and he as he mentioned the the the, the name Mendon means bright light or lighthouse so you know we're a lighthouse here in this area but i'm thankful we're not the only one god's got a bright around the world my goodness who is that smiling person right there god bless you sister Jeannie. my let's welcome her this morning god bless you amen praise the lord we're so happy to be in the, you're in the house of the Lord today. Amen. That's victory, I tell you. You know, she's been through a battle with cancer, and the Lord's been with her every step of the way. We couldn't have made it without the Lord, could we? We must have him, and we are so thankful. And he's brought her through 
those um, very difficult times, just like I explained to her. You know, we believe in Mark 16. If we take any deadly thing, it'll not harm us. So we believe that with all our hearts. And uh, every time, as I instructed her, every time you had to take that stuff the doctors recommended, you pray over it. I say that with any kind of medicine. It's off the tree of knowledge. It's not off the tree of life. It's off the tree of knowledge, and it has good and evil in it. It has its side effects. But we believe in Mark 16. We believe that we'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. We believe that God heals even without doctor's assistance. But if God chooses to use a doctor, that's, he'll heal through that way too. Medicine cannot heal. Doctors can heal. It's God that's the healer. I'm the Lord God. He said that heals all thy diseases. So therefore, it's all inclusive what he does. He, he heals us. Today, we have a, a prayer request that it came in, but it was missed. It was for a little, our little brother, Jed Mitchell. He's been real sick since camp and, and uh, sickness in the Mitchell family. I know there are many needs here in this building today, and you've got desires on your heart. Maybe you'll just lift a hand to God and say, Lord, don't pass me by today. Will you just speak to me in a special way? God sees your need. You just hold that request before him right now. Just real sincerely now. Position yourself as a child of God. Washed by the blood of Jesus. You're not worthy on your own, but we are worthy because of his grace. Look to him today. Look to him today. Ask him to just come into your heart, speak to your life, minister to you in a personal way. He's a personal God. He cares. He cares about you, your situation. Dear God, as we bow before your throne of grace, Lord, we come in this sincere as we know how. Lord, asking, Lord, that you would just make us that righteous man through your blood because it's through the righteousness of Jesus Christ we stand it's not on our own merits it's not because we've done everything perfect but it's because you gave your life for us shed your blood for our redemption we thank you for salvation today we thank you for the Holy Ghost that's in our lives that has changed us took the chains of sin off our lives and made us sons and daughters of God. And Lord, as those sons, now we approach your throne of grace because it is there we find favor and help in our time of need. Lord, our little brother Jed, sick in his body, do any other requests that was read across this desk that's already been prayed for, we just lift them to you right now. Father, may our prayers go up as the incense off of the altar and, uh, and go up with our praise and our worship to you and be received in your presence right now. And Lord, you just receive them and breathe back favor to us. Oh God, your loving kindness is greater than life. And I pray, Father, that you would just give us of thy loving kindness and thy life today. Lord, you know the desire of everyone. There are hands that went up across this building. Desires in their hearts and needs in their lives. But I pray, God, that you would minister now to their need in a very special way. That many brought their burdens. And they did. They brought it to the right place. They brought it, Lord, in the presence of believers who believe. Lord, that's what we do. We believe. We're believers. And so, Lord, with that, we profess and confess that it's already done, that you have already paid the price, and that healing is on the way for every one of these. Lord, we rebuke the hand of Satan that would want to hold back the blessings of God from God's people. Satan, you are defeated 
being and we will not have you and will not walk in your atmosphere but we will walk in the atmosphere of faith and believing and seeing God work we're asking it in the name of Jesus and even for those that are listening in around the world wherever they are tuned in at this moment or days from now oh God I pray in the name of Jesus on the wings of this prayer may faith come into their heart to believe the word of promise as we commit the service in your hands in Jesus name amen 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 why don't we just praise him right now from the depths of our hearts say thank you Lord amen that's right thank you Jesus thank you that you heal all our diseases that you supply all our needs according to your riches and glory that you haven't left one thing out for us but you provided it all thank you Lord for your goodness we thank you for your grace amen God bless you before we turn to the scripture this morning I want to say thank you for all your support to the youth camp and uh, that's uh, to the ministry team the deacons the gator patrol the musicians the technical team those who um, worked so hard on registration and and um, you know the, the, the lunch uh, monies and so on like that those that supported our youth um, in whatever way the, the wonderful skit that the young people gave and uh, they, uh, they, just, uh, they just blessed us so much Sister Linda um, writing that Brother Aaron helping out with that it was such a, such a blessing we, we uh, received a, a note and, and I can't remember exactly what it said right now but it said I'm, a, I'm a, a sister and I'm 73 years old but I watched the camp skit and I laughed and I cried and I shouted and I rejoiced. And, you know, it's, it's wonderful, you know, when, when the hearts can be touched. And our choir and everything else, even like Tabernacle, you made me proud. And I want to appreciate you very much today. And thank you for what you've done and uh, for the blessing that you are to me and to the bride of Christ and, and to those that came to um, sit down under our oak tree and find shelter and uh, get, to get a blessing there in camp. And we had a tremendous time, a, a prayer line that lasted probably till nearly um, midnight and then shoutings that, and rejoicing that just kept on going till the wee hours of the morning. So, you know, God is still moving. He's still delivering. And I know there, there are many, many reports that are coming out. We are not a defeated people. We are overcomers. We aren't surprised when the devil comes and hits back. You know, after we make such a bold attack upon him and his kingdom, we're not surprised that he comes back and, and attacks us. You know, but we just, we just stand our ground and hold the promise firm. Amen. Knowing that, knowing who has called us and sent us in this hour. If you'll turn with me to Exodus 12, we will read again from this passage of Scripture. I want to speak from it another time. And today we're going to be speaking on the token, Holy Ghost power in action. If you'll read from verse 21 with me now. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin and none of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you. Amen. I'm going to let you be seated, but I want you to turn with me to John 14, 12 for another scripture reading, John 14, 12. And I want you to remember that this scripture, um, it was not only speaking of a prophetic ministry in this day where we saw the ministry of Christ repeated, but it also speaks of, a, uh, of every believer. 
This is not just for a prophet alone. This is for every believer. And it says, verily, verily, it says, which means absolutely, absolutely, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And then turn with me to Mark 16 and verse 14, where we read the great commission of the Lord. And remember, because in this day that the seals have been taken off the book and has restored the gospel of Jesus Christ to us, that we are the ones now that are commissioned to fulfill the scripture. Because uh, the gospel must go into all the world and uh, not only that, be preached into all the world and, and um, be demonstrated. Look what he said in verse 14. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. What a wonderful promise that is. Amen. Brother Leo, I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to think about it as we're, as we're doing this for a moment. Um, I want you to be able to tell me about how many Christians in the three self church, and then how many Christians all together, and now how many are message believers estimating today? So, how many in the three self church? That's the government church for Christianity. Is did I understand right? Seventy million. All right, and then how many? Um, all total of Christians in in China, one hundred million. And then about how many believers now do you estimate are in China? About how many? More than 1,000. All right. So we have believers there in China. And, um, you know, today God has done marvelous, marvelous works already as the gospel goes there. And, you know, I, I think about many years ago, one man I had a burden on his heart. That was Brother John Lay. And he went, he went there into China not knowing anybody, not knowing how to speak the language, um, but just had a burden and, and started taking Bibles in and from there uh, taking the message in. And now there are churches that are started all over. Um, where I, When I was there in Shanghai, I've ministered to over 40 pastors there. That was 10 years ago. And uh, the government has done what it could to try to, to, to shut things down and to keep uh, Christianity out, but it just keeps rising up. And, uh, you know, God's going to have a bride no matter what. Amen. He'll have a bride and she'll be without spot or wrinkle or blemish or any such thing. But to think about it, you know, we have a, a responsibility then as the bride people to take the gospel to all the world. And what a day that we're living in when God has made available even, even through the, to, to the mains, uh, means of internet and, and the website so we can get it out. And right now um, on the message hub is, is almost every sermon. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's all complete of, uh, of Brother Branham's sermons that, that he preached that is available to the people. And we've been doing some of the same things for the Japanese believers. And, and uh, so there are many of them there today that are out there for the, on the web that anybody around the world, Chinese, Japanese, can go there and listen to. So, you know, it, it's just, um, 
it's, it's just uh, uh, the gospel going into all the world because we have a commission to fulfill. Amen. And so, as we are looking at it this today, I read these three scriptures. One, of course, from Exodus that we have been speaking about on the token where that he, he told them to take a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover and then take the blood and, that is, and put it in a basin and then take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood and then strike the lentil and the two side posts of the, with the blood that's in the basin. And so the blood has to be applied. And of course, the blood was representing a lamb had died. And it was also the, uh, the, the sign of the life of the lamb upon the doorpost. And, and so, of course, today we don't have the literal paint of the blood. We have the literal life of Jesus Christ, which is the Holy Ghost, which we apply instead of with hyssop, we apply it by faith. And, of course, it must be applied to every house. Then, of course, we read from Mark's uh, John 14, 12, where that he talks about the works that I do shall you do also. So there will always be then signs, as in Mark 16, that follow that believers. And, of course, there had to be signs over the doorpost. Over, over the doorpost of the, every dwelling. Of course, we bring that down to every individual must have it upon the lentil, on the two side posts. In other words, the body, the spirit, the soul, everything brought under the blood. And of course, it's not just that, but families, our house must be under the blood. And we have spoken about a lamb for a household and, and just a practical application of it to our houses, to our homes, to our family life, and all of those things. And now we're speaking about the token upon the church because it is also a house. Every house must have the token applied. Now, the, the destroyer is passing through the neighborhood now, and nothing is safe except that which is under the token. It must be under the blood, which in our case is the Holy Ghost. Again, we do not have the literal chemistry of the blood, the, the substance of blood. We have the life that is of the blood of Jesus Christ, and that life is the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Spirit must be applied to the, to the individual. It must be applied to the family home. It must be applied to the church. And as I, have, as I spoke some time ago on being in Passover, that we will be in Passover until the time that we hear the trumpet sound for us to leave this world of Egypt. So we will be here not going out from under the blood, staying under the blood, eating the lamb and the bitter herbs with preparations made for the trumpet sound. Because any moment we're going to hear the trumpet sound. Now, so, but as we know, the destroyer is in the land. Everybody knows, even, the, and, and they're telling us over and again, we are on the verge of World War III. And, and of course, you know, in these kind of times, we have a job to be doing, and that is, that is to make sure the blood is applied even to our church, that under, in the church, the power of the Holy Spirit is working. Amen. For we need it for salvation. We need it for healing. We need it for deliverance. The Holy Ghost is not an option. It is a must. Amen. And, and of course, as a church, our job is to impart life by having Jesus Christ in action. Now, I want you to see, uh, Brother Branham told us in the message that day on Calvary, and as I paraphrase this, he says, the greater works was to have power 
in the church, not only to heal the sick by prayer and cast out devils by prayer, but to impart eternal life to the believers. Amen. So the, the church must be a place where the Holy Spirit is present and the atmosphere is there where that eternal life is imparted. Now, I cannot give you eternal life as far as even by laying on of hands or by praying a prayer over you or by certain rituals, but we impart eternal life and, return, and remit sins just like they did on the day of Pentecost. Repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So the church must be imparting eternal life. And, and to do that, the, you see, the, the church had, had to receive the eternal life coming into the hands of the church to impart life. And that really, that's what Calvary meant. If it, if it had just stopped at the, at the shedding of the blood and Jesus had not come back in the form of the Holy Ghost, we would be just as bad off as they were in the Old Testament. Our sins pass forgiven, but no power to live it. Amen. But this Holy Ghost is the power to live it. It is to put Jesus Christ in action in our lives and in the church. And we are the continuation of the book of Acts because of having been restored back to the place that the original church fell from. Down to the church ages, we know the truth was lost. Luther brought back a strand of truth with justification. Wesley did the same with sanctification. But we today are no longer holders of scattered truths, holding strands of loose ends. We have the fullness of the word and with the fullness of the spirit for the with the restoration of the word comes the restoration of the power amen the church of Jesus Christ is not to be a powerless church but she she is not to be a lukewarm church but she is to be a church that is on fire where the spirit of God is in action working in lives and hearts healing the sick saving the lost and forgiving sins filling with the Holy Ghost casting out devils it all belongs to the church and she must be Jesus Christ in action upon the earth and shall I say she is hallelujah she is the Holy Ghost is here not in a portion not in a fragment as was given to Luther or Wesley or even Azusa Street. But it is here in its full power. Amen. The Holy Ghost and the true church makes it a continuation of the book of Acts. Looking back through history of the ages, you can see how the Antichrist spirit would come into the church and defile it and making it lukewarm and formal and powerless. But that is not where we are today. That is not we are what we are under. Amen. But by the opening of the seven seals, it is exposed Satan, revealing the man of sin and his works were, were, not, were not only when he destroyed God's people through the dark ages, but discredited God's word. But he today has been exposed. If you notice with the seals, it was not only revealing Christ, it was also exposing the Antichrist. Why? Because God is determined there will not be a people deceived in this last day, but there will be a people who are victorious, overcomers, who are the continuation of what was lost in the book of Acts. Now, so therefore, Luther's token sign was justification. Wesley's token sign was sanctification. Tongues was Azusa Street's token sign. But there is a people on the earth today who have the supernatural supreme token. Amen. The abstract of title with every creed of man, every false doctrine struck off, every mistruth corrected. Amen. And a book that 
is no longer closed to us and his promises withheld to us, but I want to say that every promise is more real to you than any other age since Pentecost, since the early ages. Amen. For God has done a work of restoration to restore a people back to the original word with its original power. Amen. Now, Brother Benham would tell us in the message token, he said, now we have a token in this day. We have been given a token which is an antitype of that type, of that natural token. He's speaking of the lamb's blood. We have been given the supernatural supreme token. Amen. All that was foreshadowed has been given to this generation. Think about it. Even what was foreshadowed in Luther or Wesley or Azusa Street has now been given to us. Even what, even what we saw in the early church in the book of Acts has now been restored back to us. So all that was foreshadowed has been given to this generation, has been given the token. Now we have the Holy Ghost is our token, and it is our identification that we have accepted the death of the Lamb. Not only was Jesus' just human life to come back on us, but it was God himself manifested in the flesh. Amen. That brought us back upon the adoption of sons, that we are now sons and daughters of God. Amen. Think about that. We didn't just receive a man's spirit. And this message is not about receiving a man's spirit. It is not even receiving the spirit of a man, of, you know, of William Branham or some great preacher. Some, it's not about receiving his spirit. It's that a spirit of a man won't do you any good. You'll be just as lost as lost can be. But if you ever get God's spirit that came by Jesus and receive of the Holy Ghost, let me tell you, friend, about that life will give you overcoming power. It'll make you victorious. Hallelujah. Amen. It brings you back to the adoption of sons. Amen. Praise God that now we are the sons and daughters of God. Think about it. The adoption in the, you know, the adoption that we're speaking about is like not adopting a baby, but taking a man when he's, he comes into his full statue and when he's fully matured. And in that matured state, he is given the father's kingdom. He's put a robe up on his shoulders. He is, he's given a special robe. He's put a ring up on his finger that identifies him with the right to use his father's name. Amen. He has the father's seal. Amen. Whatever he stamps is stamps. Whatever he binds is bind. Whatever he looses is loose. Hallelujah, that's what I'm talking about. This Holy Ghost positioned you as a son, fully adopted, fully positioned, with the robe upon you. Amen. You don't have to wait for something to come. You don't have to wait for persecution or a squeeze. Right now, you are the sons of God. Every promise is your promise. Every word is your word. It is our identification that God has accepted us. We are accepted in the beloved, in Christ. The message of this last day is a revelation of the true church and what she stands for. It is a revelation that she can do the greater works and that the blood has made the death angel pass over. We're talking about the death angel that is killing fatherhood, that is destroying motherhood, that is wrecking families, that is destroying a nation, that is ruining a society. Amen. That, that is the bane of the world. Let me tell you, I, you know, the other day I saw a couple of girls with enough metal in their mouth to build a new bridge over Boston. With, with their hair purple, what is it? What is it? It's the death angel. Amen. 
Amen. You are seeing the effects of death. The destroyer is upon their life. Do you think that's going to give them liberty? No, it's bondage. It's a hook in their jaw. It, it's a ring in their nose. It, it is something there. It is something there where Satan has a, a hold upon their life. And it's a sign that they're in bondage, that they're in sin. Amen. I see boys who don't know how to be men, effeminate, necklaces and bracelets. Mm -hmm. Permanent their hair and all kinds of stuff. Amen. Effeminate. What is it? You, you know, it's the destroyer. And you can see the effect on their lives. Amen. We see, we see people, even young girls coming to camp, lewd and crude and lesbian behavior. Why is it? The destroyer is in the land. The destroyer is going through homes. Amen. Going through churches. Amen. It's like the, like the four horse riders of Revelation, you know, speaking of the seven seals of the white, the, uh, of the, white the, the, the red, the black, and the pale. And the pale is, of course, is the same rider, and he just morphs as he changes. And his name is death. And hell follows him. And I'll tell you what, he'll ride right into the church. Amen. You're not careful. He'll ride right into the evening like tabernacle and pack you out. Amen. Because he can get to anybody without the token. No matter how much blood that we have here, it's only for those who have come under it. Who have embraced the Holy Spirit, who have received him in their life. Listen, our nation is dying. Not only is our national debt spiraling out of control, our sin debt is rising. It's out of control. Sin like you never dreamed of. We're worried about the, the um, national debt and they're talking about it, but nobody's talking about the sin debt. Amen. Our sin debt is spiraling out of control. You look at the squatter situation where people can come and take your property and push you out. What is that? It's a spirit of lawlessness. Amen. A spirit of lawlessness. And instead of protecting uh, the, the citizenry, it's, it's protecting the criminal. Catch them, release them without bail. What is it? It's a sign of the time where lawlessness is taking over the world and, and its people. You can see it happen, but let me, let me say, that's not my largest concern. That's not my biggest concern. I don't even have a thing for you to rent or take over, but let me just say, you know, the, 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 that same spirit of lawlessness is happening in the churches. Sin is not being cast out. The sick are left to lay without being healed. Come on. The atmosphere is not there for the Holy Ghost to move. Amen. What is it? It's the spirit of lawlessness. As the U.S., we have a constitution. As Christians, we have a constitution. It's against our constitution to let the sick lay. It's against our constitution not to have new births by genuine birth of the Holy Ghost. It's against our constitution. It's against the word of God. It's against the dictates of the Bible. <coughs> we can talk about George Washington fought for this constitution and this one there. He signed it and this one gave his life and this one said, give me liberty or give me death. We can talk about them. But let me tell you for a moment, Peter stood for this gospel. Paul stood for this gospel. Amen. Jesus gave his life for this gospel. Amen. We, we have too many that have fought to win the prize and to give us the word of God in a constitution. How dare we to let a spirit of lawlessness come in and squat. You're not taking over our church. You're not welcome here. Amen. I, I may not have a double barrel shotgun, but I got an ax in 238. Hallelujah. I've got a promise from the word of God that will cast out devils. Amen. That will speak in new 
tongues. If we lay hands on the sick, they will recover. We will recover all. Let me say this again, though. The message of this last age is a revelation of the true church. That's what the message is about. It's a revelation of the true church, Christ in the true church, and what the true church stands for. It's a revelation that she can do the greater works. I am speaking to a bunch of can-do people. Who have been told, you can do. You can do the greater works. Amen. That that it is there for you to do and you can. Let me just say again, it's a revelation that the blood has made the death angel pass over. That we stand justified and pure before God as we stood back there in his mind before the world began. So therefore, we can do the greater works. This makes us an invincible army. For Satan has no claim on us. I'm looking at a people today that Satan has no claim on you. If you have the Holy Spirit today, you have the abstract of the title deed. That means that every debt that was against you is struck off. There's no liens against you. Satan has no claims on you. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm preaching to a people that Satan has no claims on. I am telling you this morning that Satan has no right to your property. He has no right to your health. He has no right to your body. He has no right to your mind. He has no right to your soul. You are free people. You are not to live in bondage. You are not slaves any longer. You're under the blood. Once they came under the blood, there was no longer slaves. Slavery had ended the day the lamb shed his blood and it was supplied. The blood made Israel invincible to the destroyer. Read the Bible. Amen. The destroyer was coming, but the blood made Israel invincible and provided freedom to escape the hell of Egypt, the bondage. The gates of Egypt could not prevail against them. For 400 years, it had held them captive. But now the blood had come. And with the death of that lamb, the penalty of sin was gone, paid for by the blood of the lamb. And there issued in a freedom. Hallelujah. Now, listen, friends, with this revelation in our lives of what we are, who we are, and what we stand for, and that we can do the greater works, the gates of hell cannot prevail against us either. But we will prevail over them. I don't care what situation you're in this morning. I don't care what the doctor has said. I don't care what your your checkbook says. It doesn't matter what the problems that are assessing you. Let me just tell you, the gates of hell will not prevail against us. Hallelujah. Amen. It cannot prevail. Amen. Oh, may God by his spirit just give, just give us continuous life-giving and prevailing revelation. You know, make that real to us. If, if the church should just get a fresh revelation and by it become the living word manifested, we would do the greater works. That's what we ought to ask today, Lord, a fresh revelation. I've heard the word, but let it become real to me. I've heard the word, but let it be quickened. I've heard the word. I know it's the truth. I declare it's the truth, but make it real in my life. You see, we're not just to come together to talk about the message. 
this is what, what so many does, is we just come together and we just talk about the message, how God has done wonderful things in our age and, and uh, what, what great things God has done, as if that's all past. We're not just to come to talk about the message. We are here to apply the token. What is the token? The blood. What is the blood? The Holy Ghost. We are here to apply the blood, the Holy Ghost. You apply the, you apply the, you apply the Holy Ghost to, you, to your situation, something's going to happen. Amen. Come on. You can apply the blood. You apply the blood and put it up on your television. It'll just whack out of control and it'll be gone. Amen. You put it on your porn habit. Let me tell you, the Holy Ghost on your porn habit will blow it into oblivion. It'll knock that porn devil. You won't have to have nine steps. And I won't have to do a seminar to tell you why that is harmful and hurtful. You won't need all of that. You'll need one thing, the token. It'll take care of it. You won't need psychology, but a lot of neology will help. Amen. The token must be applied. Without it, you're going to perish. That's the only thing. You don't just come together and say, well, I believe it. You know, you get beneath it. You get into it. How do you do that? Well, the Bible's clear. By one spirit, we're baptized into one, into one body. So by one Holy Ghost baptism, that's how we get in the body. You want to know how to get in? Get the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's the most important thing that there is today is the spirit. Without it, you're lost. Amen. And now, if you truly believe and you've applied the blood, then it is taking effect. Amen. If, if you, you see, it's like medicine. You know, the, how do you know you're just getting a placebo if, it, if nothing works, nothing changes? Right? Amen. They, there's too much that, too many quack pharmacists today that have taken the power out of the word, out of the medicine. Amen. Let me tell you, it, I, I want you to get this. It is, not, it is not a treatment for sin. We have made churches into treatment centers where we will treat your sin disease. You know, be, be a little better, you know, do this. Hey, if you'll just pay your tithes and come to church, well, you'll be a better person. Listen, this ain't about becoming a better person. This is about becoming a son of God. Amen. If, if we can just get you to reform, this is not a reformation. This is a transformation. Well, if we can get you to change your habits, it's not about turning a new page. It's about receiving Christ and having his life within you. And then it's the power of God in you. It's Jesus Christ in action. So you see, it's not, church is not to be for a treatment center. We are to have a cure. You wonder why they can't cure cancer. Well, a lot of money in it. A lot of big farmers in it. Lots of fundraisers. Lots of people getting paid. Amen. I don't want to be a conspiracist here, but, you know, I'm just saying. Just saying. There's a reason. People make a lot of money off of it. So we, we, we work and work and we, and we take funds and more funds and we don't ever get a cure. But that's not what Jesus did. Amen. He paid sin's debt once and for all. And he provided not a treatment for it, but he provided a cure for sin. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you, it'll cure the worst disease there is. I don't care if you're an alcoholic, a drug addict, a prostitute, a, a pill pusher, whatever you are. Let me tell you, the blood of Jesus Christ will so transform you. Make a son or daughter of God out of you. It's a sin cure. Takes even the desire of it away. And it must take effect. Hallelujah. 
it must take effect. If it's not having an effect in your life and you're still unchanged, Oh, I believe them. I believe the word, brother Tim. I believe in Christ. I, I believe. I believe the message. Let me tell you, if it hadn't taken effect, the effect of the death angel is shown in those kids' mouth with with metal and their tongue and their eyes and their nose. I can't hardly stand to get food from them. I look at them and, you know, something coming out of their nose. It's gross. But it's a death angel. It's a death angel. All tatted up with all kinds of things, you know, tatting up their bodies. What is it? It's the death angel. Amen. Your body's holy. It's not for every sign of the world on it. You are to be a sign. Amen. You are to be a sign, but not that. Come on. But it must take effect. It must, they are a voice for that. They are a voice for the rock and roll or, or for the rap music or whatever it is. They are a voice for that. It's living out their life. It's an action in them. Well, what I'm trying to tell you is you are to be Jesus Christ in action on the earth. In your life, the way you dress, the way you present yourself. Ladies looking like ladies, men looking like men. Not just looking, but, I, but living like men. Real men, real fathers, real mothers. Christians. See, it must take an effect. There was a story of the Welsh survival happened in, the, in Great Britain, in the country of Wales. Britain is made up of, of several different countries like England and Wales and, and uh, there's Scotland. And then, and then of course, there's I Ireland and, and over in the, in, on the British Isles. But in, in a meeting in Wales in 1904, this is just before the Azusa revival, they had a gathering of people there. It was, um, it was a time... A revival that struck where they, they estimated nearly 100,000 people would convert it in those couple of years there just in, in those countries. And it was a precursor to the Azusa Street Revival in 1906. And it would be in February 1904 that in, in a meeting there, one young lady, her name was Flory Evans. She is quoted as saying, she just got up and made a proclamation, and she said, I love the Lord Jesus with all of my heart. Amen. And that caused such an impression. It was said with such fervor, with such, a, uh, with such sincerity, that it drove others to their knees. And a revival was started. This event would actually initiate that revival. And this, this, uh, this would spark an awakening to the rest of, of Britain, Scandinavia, parts of Europe, North America, the mission fields of, of India and the Orient and Africa and Latin America. And there were great men who had heard about this. And they were dignitaries. Some of them were doctors of divinities with all of their collars maybe turned around backwards and they come from the USA to see what this revival is all about. They want to discover how it happened. You know, people want to know how it happened. I'll tell you why, how it happens. Just get in love with Jesus. You want revival in your heart? That's it. Get to the place like that. I love the Lord Jesus with all my heart. Amen. That, that'll do more for it than anything else. Opening your life to revival. And here is this walking down the street looking for the building where it was being held, where, 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 the, uh, where the revival was happening. They saw a policeman who they heard whistling a hymn. And so they walked over to him and asked him directions to where the Welsh revival was and asked him, said, where is the Welsh revival? And this little cop, you know, was directing traffic and, uh, and he just said, the Welsh revival, well, the Welsh revival isn't me. I am the Welsh revival. 
You see, they wanted to know what building it was in. Amen. But you see, he had become the Welsh Revival. Let me tell you, the revival, the bride's revival is not in a building. It ain't contained in even, even like tabernacle. But if a man or woman can get on fire for God, the bride's revival will be in their life and they will be the bride's revival. Hallelujah. And that will make them be Jesus Christ in action upon the earth. But Jesus said, because I live, you shall live also. My life will be in you, and the works that I do shall you do also. You see, we must get to that place. He promised it would do it, and it's got to come that way. You see, but it's not just to the individual. It is the church must be displaying the token. As Brother Branham told about it in his token sermon where he preached about this, he said today, every church, every individual that isn't and cannot display that token of the Holy Ghost is spiritually dying and will die. So every church, I want to emphasize, because we, we've dealt with the individual, we dealt with the home, now just dealing with the church. Every church that cannot display that token. The token has to be on display. It must be seen. You see, it, it's got to be displayed amongst the people, making him, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We must have the word. The word is important. You see, you see we must have the word, but the word in his power. We must have the word in his power, but to release that power. It must be mixed with faith because faith releases the power from the word. You remember in the book of Hebrews said the word preached did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith in them that heard it. It is not enough just to have the message, but it also must have of that faith there that quickens it, the spark that makes it alive. In other words, it cannot be just the mechanics. It must also have the dynamics because the mechanics without dynamics is no good the same as, as dynamics without mechanics is no good. You can scream and shout and run the aisles and dance all over and not have the word of God and you still, it's no good. You'll never get anywhere. You're just cranking on the engine. You're just sputtering there and making a, a bunch of noise. We don't want to just be a church that makes a bunch of noise. Amen. But we, we do want the noise because it's a sign of life. Amen. You can't crank an engine and there not be noise. Amen. And young people like to have a nice, nice loud muffler on. Amen. And you get a bunch of young people filled with the Holy Ghost, they make a lot of noise. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I tell you, if it gets to the old people, they will start making noise too. And they will be shouting and rejoicing. Hallelujah. Amen. But you, but you see, it's not one without the other. It takes both of them. A mere confession of faith. Of, of, I believe the message is, isn't sufficient. But when we really believe it, it'll display its power. You see, when the true word is preached in the believing church, it will create an atmosphere of faith. Now, when, when that atmosphere is more than, a, more than a mere confession of, oh, I believe the message is true, but when we really believe it, it will display its power. Remember, the blood was applied by hyssop, by faith. The life on display is what makes the death angel pass over. It is not enough to have it in, the, in your Bible. It is not enough to just have it in a bucket. It is not just enough to have a collection of paraphernalia or, or a message library. That ain't enough. Come on, 
church. Amen. But when the word is believed and obeyed, you and the word become one and it works through you. Remember, the works that I do shall you do also. Now, when the word and you become one, then it lives itself out and you become a walking Bible, an epistle of Jesus Christ. You are the living word. Now, what good is the blood if it doesn't give power over the death angel? What good is the Holy Ghost if it doesn't give you power over sin? Hello? If it isn't keeping the destroyer, the death angel, from your door. See, your body is to be the temple of the Holy Ghost. And it must be, the blood must be on display there. If it isn't keeping porn out of your temple, what good is that blood? The destroyer is coming. Destroy it. If it isn't keeping adultery out of your marriage, if it isn't keeping you clean of alcohol and tobacco and vaping and sexting in your texting. Amen. You know, then I ask, is it really the blood of Christ? If it's really the blood, it's going to keep that out of your life. It not only will save you, but it will keep you clean. I'm glad today to talk about a power of the Holy Ghost. That just will do more than save you from hell, but will save you from the hell on this earth of sin. In the Old Testament, the blood of bulls and goats could not take away sin or sin desire. It could only treat sin. It could not cure sin. It had no cure for sin in the Old Testament. You see, it says the inoculation that they received wasn't too good. It's kind of like, you know, this COVID shot they gave. Government required it. I couldn't, couldn't go to Canada without it, so I took it. But did it keep people from from COVID? No. No, you know, the inoculation wasn't too good. So they tried this one, and they bragged on that one, and this one will do it, and, you know, this one will do it, and everybody line up and get it. You know, the president shows he gets it, but it doesn't do no good. He gets COVID. But you see, the inoculation wasn't too good, and that's the way the Old Testament was. You know, it was a big claim, the blood of the lamb and, and slay the lamb and whatever, it, and it just rolled the sins ahead. Amen. It, it, it could only cover sin. It could not annihilate sin. So you see, there was always a conscience of sin, and every year he had to come back again, make his offering year by year. But the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that the worshiper once purged hath no more conscience of sin. In other words, no more desire to sin. The whole thing is gone from him. You see, you do not, no matter what they tell you, have to sin every day. Amen. You do that because you willfully want to. And the reason you willfully want to is because you've never died to yourself. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Because when you die to sin, that thing is gone. The desire is gone. Amen. But you know, people are doing what, like a blackbird trying to put a peacock feather in him and say, look, I'm a peacock. You know, he's not a peacock. He just got something that's stuck in himself. It's got to grow from the inside out. And that's the whole deal. This is not about a reformation. This is not even about changing your way of dress and I'll conform to what what the Word says. You know, and I'm going to do this because that's what's preached here. Listen, that won't save you. It's got to be a change on the inside. It's got to grow from the inside out. It's got to change sin's desire. So when you have the world and sin and cutting hair and painting that comes out against the word of God, it shows the Holy Spirit is not there. You know, it's a direct evidence. So you would call it, we would call it prostitution because you've got two lovers. You're claiming to love God and still serve in sin. 
I'm going to preach a little bit about this. And I'll bring a balance here in a minute, just for those of you that thinks I'm not. But until then, I'm going to just leave you hanging right where I've got you. <laughs> Amen. So you see, you see, the Bible said, He that is born of God does not commit sin, for he cannot sin, for the seed of God remains in him. Yes. So how can he sin when a sinless God is in him? When he's in, a, when he's in a sinless God, how can he sin? No matter what he's done, the blood's covered him. He's a new creature now. He, his desires and ambition is of heaven because he's changed from a cockleburr to a wheat. His desires are not the same as it was, and he displays it. You all say, well, I believe that, and still sin it? Nah, you're deceived. You see, it can't display nothing but the token. The token of the Holy Ghost must give power over the destroyer. Or it's worthless. It's just, it's just like I said, you know, when I was preaching about the illegitimate child. If the, Ill, you know, if the blood of Jesus Christ could not take the sin away of your parents, something you never did, and it would keep you out of the rapture, then the blood of Jesus Christ is no more effective than the blood of bulls and goats. It took 10 generations to breed that out. 10 generations before they could come back in the house of the Lord. That's how bad adultery was. But by one offering, he has sanctified you forever. You don't have to go 400 years back in your pedigree and prove that there is no illegitimate birth. Come on. You are born again. You've got another birth. And in that birth, there is no illegitimacy. Hallelujah. But you know, the devil wants to hold things over people's lives. And let me just tell you, friends, when the blood takes care of it, it's all gone. No matter what your mother did, your daddy did, your grandparents did, or whatever did, it's all gone. Amen. You say, well, Brother Tim, I got a quote. Just read the, just read the whole quote. That's all. Just, just don't stop. Just keep reading. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. The token of the Holy Ghost gives power over the destroyer. The blood, when I see the blood, the destroyer will pass over your dwelling. The token of the Holy Ghost, the life of Christ, gives power over the destroyer. Let's go to Luke 24, 49. And I want you to see this. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, until you be endued Amen. with power Amen. from on high. Amen. Glory to God. Wait into the city of Jerusalem. This is what his instruction. And what was they going to receive? They would be endued with power. Amen. I want you to see the Holy Ghost is power. Amen. So if you read Acts 1 and 8, you'll see also that, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. Right? Amen. So the Holy Ghost is power. When you receive the Holy Ghost, it's power. Amen. The Holy Ghost is not weak. The Holy Ghost is power to overcome. Oh, don't tell me that sin still has dominion over you and you got the Holy Ghost. Don't tell me you can't love your brother and you got the Holy Ghost. Don't tell me you can't create the right atmosphere in your home and in the church and you have the Holy Ghost. Is somebody with me? Don't hang up on me. I ain't through. I got a lot more to talk about this morning to preach about. Amen. But don't tell me that sin still has dominion over you and you got the Holy Ghost. Amen. In other words, that you got the Holy Ghost and you still remain sin slave. 
when the token was given, when the blood was applied, they were no more slaves. They were free to go. The blood was their liberty. Amen. Amen. The Bible said that sin shall have no more dominion over you. So how can Jesus be Lord over your life and sin still reign over you too? You cannot serve two masters. And Christ will not share a throne with the devil. Amen. The Bible said you are free from sin. It is no longer your master. Amen. Do you know the Holy Ghost will give you mastery over the devil? How else could you cast him out? Come on. The Holy Ghost will give you mastery over the devil. How else will he flee from you? Now, you see, the Holy Ghost is power. The word in the Greek is dunamis. It's from the, it's from the root word of what we use in English is dynamic. Amen. So really, when we're talking about dynamics, we're talking about the power yes. of the Holy Ghost. So this is what he says when he talks about mechanics and dynamics. The dynamics is the power of the Holy Ghost. The word without the dynamics or the power of the Holy Ghost is no good. So you see, dynamics is something that is energetic. It's functioning. It's live. It's operative. It's working, which describes, uh, which is marked by uh, usually continuous a continuous and productive activity or change. And that which is dynamic is characterized by energy or forces that produces motion as opposed to that which is static or motionless or lifeless. So I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost gives unlimited strength that is at your disposal. Unlimited strength. Show me where Jesus limited even your prayer. Ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. If you would even say to this mountain and be removed and be cast into the sea, it will obey you. Jesus did not put limits on the power to believers. Amen. I'm talking to people with mountain-moving faith. Hallelujah. That has mountain-moving power. Come on, church. Amen. Deuteronomy, which is power, especially achieving power. You know what it refers to? It refers to intrinsic or inborn power or inherent ability. When you are born again, you have an inherent power that you inherited from God by your new birth. There's no weakness in God, so you didn't inherit weakness. You inherited weakness from your parents, so did I. But when from this parent and this birth, there is no weakness to inherit. It is the power, the ability to, to carry out a function. It is the potential for functioning in some way, power, might, strength, ability, capability. The power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. By nature, you have power in you. When you're born again of the Holy Ghost, you have God's power in you. Amen. You receive power from on high because of your new birth. From the spirit that comes into you by the new birth, it is the energy and the power to make Satan move. It is the force to cast him out. Amen. It is, it is the power to complete, completely defeat sin until it is dead. Now, I know that is contrary to all of Christianity, secular Christianity today denies us power because their religion is powerless. It just instructs you to do good and try to do better. Now, and although 
claims are made to be converted to powerless against sin. So they're like this. They're described in 2 Timothy 3 and 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. So they go to church. You might be that way this morning. And you go to church, and you have a form of godliness, a profession of faith. Say, well, I received the Holy Ghost. I shouted, I spoke in tongues, or I danced, or I did this, I did that. Having a form of godliness, but then deny the power. You you see, the point is that the so-called godliness of of these men is a sham. Because it's devoid of any real divine power to break the power of sin. You know that, and and of course those that possess the indwelling spirit and and have this divine dunamis, this power, have been inherit, have inherit or the inborn ability to wage victorious battle with the three, with the believers, three mortal enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Amen. All of them are seeking to turn you away from God into self, the flesh, and its ungodly, unholy attributes and actions. But let me tell you, the Holy Ghost gives us victory over the flesh. Because Galatians 5, 24 said, they that are Christ, and you can only be his by birth, and that birth is the indwelling of the Spirit of God. And they that are in Christ, are, are Christ have crucified, killed the flesh, and with the affections and lust. So you see, we are crucified. Let's take an important scripture for a moment. Romans 6 and 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So our old man is crucified with Christ. If your old man is still breathing, if he's still living, if he's still controlling you, you need to take him to the cross. Get him crucified and killed out. Self-will dealt with. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That from henceforth or from now on, we should not serve sin. You see, this is it. If our old man is crucified, from then on, we do not serve sin. Slavery is over. Amen. Verse 7, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Now you know. If you have died, that old man has died, then you are freed from sin. Watch. Knowing if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. So this is what Paul would say in Galatians 1.20. Put that scripture up, please. Galatians 1.20, he says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, not I. Did I get it wrong? 2.20. Try again. One more time. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh. I'm living a life and it's in the flesh, but I live it by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm no longer a slave to sin. Hallelujah, the blood has made me free. And he that the Son has set free is free indeed. (laughs) Hallelujah. So in verse 8, where we were reading in Romans 6, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, died no more, death hath no more dominion over him. Amen. So does death have dominion over Christ? It has no more dominion over you either. Because in that he died, he died into sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth to God. 
Well, likewise, reckon yourself also to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Amen. Amen. You say, are you saying? Are you saying we are sinless? I am. Well, how is that? Now, here, I'm going to reel you back over. Is is it because we never made a mistake? No. But it's because the desire of sin is gone. And when you do make a mistake, it's like stepping into a pile of manure. Now, I've got a neighbor around here that they got a dog. And when I walk in their yard, I have to watch for the manure. I have to watch it as I go in the house and when I get into my car. Because I don't want to step in the stinky stuff. It tracks, it smells, it contaminates, it gets on me, and I hate it. I will not purposely put my foot in the middle of it. Amen. But if I make a mistake, I will quickly wash it off. And you do not do that on purpose, but when you do, Jesus' blood washes you and cleanses you from all sin. Hallelujah. That's why he said if you sin willfully after coming to the knowledge of the truth, there's no sacrifice that remains for you. In other words, if you sin willfully, you got to go back to Calvary because you don't have a sacrifice. But if you got a sacrifice, you're not going to be sinning willfully. You're not going to be purposely doing things wrong and willfully doing things wrong. Oh, yeah, you do my, you do things wrong. You make mistakes along the way, but it will not be something you contemplated. It won't be something you desire. Are you with me? Now, you see, you're not living under the old covenant and its blood because it had no power to take away sin desire. It loved sin. Now, The life that's in Christ came back upon the repentant sinner. And that life being the perfect life of Christ, sinless and righteous, then the guilty one could go free for he had no desire to sin. The life of Jesus had come back upon him. And that's what is meant in Romans 8 and 2. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Amen. Amen. Now we are sinless. But now let's think of it. We are sin. We are sinless because his blood has cleansed us. But in the other sense, I'm not sinless. I got plenty of things hanging on me. But every hour I confess it. I constantly, when I see my wrong, I turn from it. Amen. Amen. And I try to do what's right. I wouldn't try to go to heaven on my merits. I I, I wouldn't get there on my merits. Amen. I'm trusting solemnly in Jesus Christ. You know know what? I, 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 I do the same thing. I do the same thing when I walk through that neighbor's yard and they have that dog and I watch out for the piles. I do the same thing when I get on the internet. I watch the piles and I avoid them. Not because I desire them, but because I don't want to be contaminated. The thing stinks and I don't want it on me and I don't want to be contaminated with it. Amen, I hate it. The desire for that is gone. Oh, those beautiful women. Them women are beautiful. They're the gate to hell. They never make you a wife. They're not even real. 
A woman, a woman like that that's a model out there, she won't be a model all her life. Baby or two, if she ever becomes a real mother, it'll stretch her out. I mean, they, they, I'm telling you, they're not real. Amen. Amen. That's why you want a real wife, a real woman that'll be a real mother. Amen. And you don't want to be looking over this and trying to compare with that. It's filthy. And besides that, it's sin. The Bible said that if you look upon a woman to lust after in your heart, you committed adultery with her already yes. in your heart. So what is it? You walk, you walk through this world. You're in this world, but you're not of it. Right. Say, well, Brother Tim, I walk down the street, and there's pornography there. And then I look over that way, and there's another bunch of girls with pornography. And I look over there. Well, start looking up. Amen. When you see these things come to pass, turn your head and look up, for your redemption draws nigh. Amen. Sure, we sin. We make mistakes, but not willfully. Sin desires are gone. What I'm trying to do today is tell you to step up in faith. Amen. Come up into a higher sphere. There, there's a higher life than, what you're, than, than that, where that you are endued with power from on high, where the powers of God come down as the rain from heaven, and we are to live in heavenly places where there is nothing between us and God and that that would hold it back the rain from heaven. You know, the nominal church with this, has its cold professions, just rituals. And they get a little, very little of the spirit because of its rituals and, 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 and cold professions or like an umbrella holding back the spirit, trusting that their profession of faith in Christ will, has saved them. But saved them from What? Still habits of porn and alcohol and cigarettes and vaping and rock and roll and rap and all the other stuff. It's just a cold profession. Well, I'm in the message, Brother Jim. That could be a cold profession. Maybe some are justified or sanctified, but they need to move higher. And then you get in the full gospel ranks of the Azusa movement, they get a little more. Many times fanaticism holds them back from the full blessings. Maybe get the Holy Spirit on their human spirit and, and they'll shout or dance or even manifest the gift of tongues, but they too need to move higher. We've got to move into this next sphere, into the fullness of the Spirit, where nothing, neither cold forms nor rituals nor, nor fanaticism holds back the blessings before we can ever have the rapture. You see, God wants us to have more than ritualistic forms. This, uh, this had happened even with Israel and, and God's complaint against them in the, in the book of Isaiah. He said, you have come in with your sacrifices and your worship and you make me sick. He said, your, your offerings, hey, you know, and your sacrifices are, they, they nauseate me. He said, because you're coming in with just a ritualistic form, you know, and yet it's the truth. You're doing exactly what I said do, but you're not doing it with sincerity. You're not doing it in the right atmosphere of realizing I sin, I'm wrong. I, you know, I'm bringing a lamb, and, but it's me that should have died. You see, originally, that, that's the way it was. They took this lamb, they kept it up, and, you know, it was, it was a pet. It was, it, it, the life meant something. But after a while, you know, money got into it, and you could just go buy your lamb. You know, do you ever raise something and have trouble eating it? You know, we... We're talking the other day, you know, I, I, was, I was a farmer, and so, you know, Brother Craig Boer, he was a city slicker, come down to our place, and, and I gave him a bottle to feed the baby calf. You know, we didn't have a market. Well, we milked goats, and so we didn't have a market for the milk because it's illegal in Louisiana to sell it, so I could, I could feed it to a calf and raise a calf and sell that. 
make soap out of other things. So in a way, you know, I could do that or make meat for the table. So he looked at that little Jersey calf, you know, which is not really a meat animal, but, you know, it could be used for that purpose, little, little steer. See its big brown eyes, you know, and, and reach out its tongue and wrap its around the big nipple on that bottle and suck it. And he's, oh, this is so cute, so cute. What's his name? I said, Tasty. <laughs> but, you know, it's like that. You know, when you, when, you know, they, it's sometimes hard, you know, to, to eat Betsy when you raised her. You know, but the, but the same thing was with, with them. You know, to begin with, there was pain in this. There was pain in this. You know, you took a, a, a lamb and, and you said, I should have died. But this lamb's going to die in my place. And they didn't do like we did, take a 22 and end its life and then cut its throat. They would hold it back. There, and then they would cut the juggler vein. And with every heartbeat, it would spray out blood. And the worshiper would get blood on him. I, I'm sorry, this is gory. I don't mean it that way. I'm trying to get a point to you. That it came with feeling. You know, with remorse of taking a life of the seriousness of sin. But it got where we could just go buy one at the market. We just go get one. You know, we just offer it. Well, that's what we've done for generations. That's the way it cuts with church sometimes. Well, mama went to this church and daddy went to this church and grandpa went to this church and it begins to lose its feeling. <laughs> and the sincerity isn't there. You know, and... And there, there God said, I'll hide my face from you. I don't want it. It stinks in my nostrils. Read the book of Isaiah and you'll see it. That they had come to the point that, that there was, the, the atmosphere wasn't right. The feeling wasn't there. The remorse for sin wasn't there. And, and the Bible warns us that in the last day, the church would get away from sincerity and faith, that they would have a form of godliness but they would deny the power thereof. And God hates a powerless religion. Any religion that doesn't have Christ in it is powerless. Amen. Any, religious, any religion that Christ in it is, it is under his own blood and has got power in it, you know, God hates a religion without power. That's why he told this Laodicean church, you are lukewarm. You make me sick. And it will get to the place right there in the very church itself where sin will be done and wrong is done. But then the power to live above it is denied. Because we have a form of godliness. But the power to live an overcoming life isn't there. So it's never in action. I'd like you to turn with me to Ephesians 1 and verse 18. In this letter to the Ephesians, Paul did not pray that believers might be given divine power but that they might be aware of the divine power they already possessed. Amen. What I'm trying to tell you with the Holy Ghost, you have been given power. Amen. And it must be displayed. It must have the inoculation to ward off the destroyer. In Ephesians 1 and 18, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but in that which is to come. 
Isn't that a wonderful scripture? Look what he says. I want you to understand you've been given a power. And that power is the same power that raised up Jesus from the dead. That quickened his mortal body. So don't you know if that Holy Spirit did that to Jesus, dead in the grave, what will it do to you who are dead in sins and trespasses and quicken you and make you alive in Christ Jesus? It will raise you up to serve the living God. So it is not powerless. It has power in it to take a man dead for three days and raise him up again. So much power that it'll take you and raise you up to walk in the newness of life. Notice what it is. He he raised him up far above principalities and power and might and everything that is every name that is named. You name it, Christ triumphed over it. The Holy Ghost, that's Christ, isn't it? They're not three persons in the Godhead. There's one person, and that's Jesus Christ. Are you with me? We believe in a one God Bible, don't we? Hear, O Israel, the Lord that God is one Lord. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Holy Spirit, and the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Christ. And if you have the Holy Ghost, you have the Spirit of Christ. Hallelujah, and it's triumph. Now, you name it. Come on, far above all principality, far above Satan, far above every work. Come on, far above any kingdom and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world but also in the world to come. I'm telling you, that's the power of the Holy Ghost. It is the power over kingdoms of hell. It is the power over sickness. It is the power over sin. It is the power to make you live a righteous, holy life. It's the power of God into deliverance. Look at verse 22. Let's just read it down, and then I'm going to go into chapter 2. Look now. And he has put all things under his feet. Let's don't just read over this. And gave him to be head over all things to the church. So he's the head of the body, and the body has the feet. Come on, somebody. Yes. Amen. He, has, he is the head, yes. and his body on the earth is the church, yes. and we are his feet. We are his boots on the ground. Yes. Amen. This is where he's living. This is where he's acting. This is where he is reigning. He is now reigning on him through you. Come on. Yes. And gave him the bed ahead over all things to the church and put all things under his feet. So then, therefore, it's not just under his feet. It's under your feet. Hallelujah. Every one of them are already defeated. You are fighting with a defeated foe. I am announcing to the devil today, Satan, you are defeated. Your works are defeated. Your power is vanquished. Amen, that Jesus is Lord over all and he lives in my heart and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. And he, listen now, look what he's done. He has lifted us up. Now watch, this is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Look now, and you, and you, hath he quickened, who was dead, That word quicken is made alive. Amen. When it says quicken, it means made alive. When it said the word of God is quick, that don't mean, oh, it's a sword that's really quick. No, it means it's alive. The word of God is living. It is alive. It is powerful, more powerful than a two-edged sword. Amen. It'll cut coming and going. It'll discern right down into the innermost parts. And you have he quickened. 
who were dead in sins and trespasses. Next verse. Wherein in times past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, atmosphere. Satan had control over the atmospheres of your life. Amen. The, according to the prince of power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Verse 3, watch now. Among whom... We also had our manner of life, our conversation. That means manner of life in times past, in the lust of the flesh. That's the way we used to be, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we're by nature children of wrath, even as others. This is how we were. We were born in sin, shape and iniquity. This is our past. Of such were some of you. Amen. Look now. But God. Hallelujah. Now we bring somebody else into the equation. You were the rotten sinner. You was no good. You were dead in sins and trespasses. But God. But God. But God. You were drunken on your way to hell. But God. Amen. You were a porn addict. But God. Amen. You were a sex addict. But God. Amen. You were there in sins and trespasses, burdened down with every kind of denominational theory. But God, but God who is rich. Oh, I'm talking about a rich, rich father. I'm talking about a rich, rich God. A God who is rich in mercy for his great love where he he loved us. Next verse. Even when we were dead in sin, have made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we are saved. Hallelujah. His favor upon your life has taken sin away. And you stand before him redeemed by the blood of the Lamb with every devil under your feet. More than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. It's the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwelling in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You cannot imprison a believer. You cannot hold him back. You cannot keep him with the gates of hell. The gates of hell will not prevail against you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to the great King of glory. Let the musicians come. Let's worship God with all our heart. Let's praise him. Every devil turn to your feet. You're not a slave anymore. You're victorious. And the blood is on display. Display that blood this morning. Let it be displayed in the church of the living God. Blessed be his name. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be his name. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for saving me, Lord. Thank you for redemption. Thank you for the blood of Christ. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. For it is the power of God and the deliverance, salvation. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In moments like these, I sing another song. Will you sing in the E flat? In moments like these, I was sing. Come on, sing it out to him. I sing it out.
I'm no longer a slave to sin. I am a child. of that Passover night all the family gathered eating the lamb the bitter herbs you know it had to be prepared right couldn't be boiled because you boil it you could just add any kind of flavor to it it, 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 it couldn't be eaten raw don't eat it raw but roast it with fire. You know, I'm afraid that's what's wrong. There ain't nothing wrong with the lamb. But I'm afraid the fire ain't getting around it and giving it the taste. You see, he don't want it boiled and flavored with some doctor to man. He wants the fire, the flame of the Holy Ghost to flavor the lamb, to give it that savor. And as they're gathered the staff is in their hand, shoes on their feet, dress for the journey. There the father and the mother together, and the family, each eating that lamb. Now listen, they would take their journey by the strength of that lamb. The very nutrients, the proteins the, that was in that lamb would be transferred into them and they would leave on the life of that lamb. Come on now. This is what he's doing. He's getting us ready for the journey. And that which you are eating on is the unfailing body word of Christ, the Son of Man. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. And it's that that gives us strength for the journey. How are we going to make it in a rapture? We can't take our, ourselves by the bootstraps and jump over the moon, much less go in a rapture. How are we going to go? Because of the lamb. The food you're eating on. <laughs> the word God sent you is giving you strength. 
as that life of that word by the Holy Ghost comes in you, it quickens your mortal being. Hallelujah. And as I see them, you know, Daddy, you know the slave master that whipped you and beat you? Yep. He was the firstborn, and tonight he died. He no longer has power over me. That taskmaster sin has no more hold on my life. I'm no longer a slave. Freedom bells are ringing. I'm going out with the trumpet sound. And this old world can't hold me. Amen. I'm going to be changed in a moment, a twinkling eye. Grandma's sitting there on the on the cot, the Bible said they left and there wasn't a weak or feeble one among them. So, Brother Tim, that ain't possible that old people like that, they had to be left in Egypt, you know. You know, uh, let me tell you something. If you, if you can't believe that, you can't believe what I'm fixing to tell you. That even old people in this rapture age will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye by the divine energy of the Holy Ghost. And back there in that exodus, old granny got a bite of that lamb. There just before her last breath, when she was about to die, and she got a bite of that lamb and began to take its life into her. And something rose up in her of quickening power. We're talking about the natural lamb now, but what about the spiritual lamb? Amen. Quickening power begin to work in her. And next thing you know, she's up dancing, eating lamb too. And then I'm ready to go to this promised land. Amen. If you don't go, it ain't going to hinder me. I'm going. Amen. I'm eating the lamb. I'm determined. I've made up my mind. I'm going to serve the Lord. And the parent, the father looked over to the children, to the mother, and said, I'm no longer a slave to sin. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I am a child. You split the sea. You split the sea. You split the sea so I could walk right through no it. My fears were drowned in perfect Oh, love. yeah. You rescued me. You rescued me so, so that I could stand and I could sing and, sing and declare. I am a child of God. Behind heaven's throne, 
bless you. If you'd like to be dismissed, free to do so. Take these hands and lift them up. For I have not the strength to praise you near enough. For I am nothing. I Without you, take my voice. Oh, take my voice and pour it out.